Hello and welcome back to Linear Algebra. And in today's part 32, we will talk about the transposition for matrices. Indeed, this is not a complicated operation, but an important one for calculations. However, before we start explaining it, you already know, first I want to thank all the nice people who support this channel on Steady, via PayPal or by other means. And please don't forget, in the description you find a link to my webpage where you can find further material for this video. And of course, also for all the other videos. Okay, then I would say, let's start talking about the transposition. Roughly speaking, for matrices, it means that we change the roles of columns and rows. And here, please note, columns and rows act differently in calculations, for example, when we have the matrix multiplication. Moreover, you already know the transposition for vectors. In particular, you might remember that for such a column vector, we introduced this t and called it transpose. And indeed, what happens here is that this t transforms the column vector into a row vector. So we have the same information, but now the entries are lying down in one row. And there you already know, we use this t to describe the inner product with the help of the matrix multiplication. Therefore, now it makes sense to extend this notation to say that we want to transform a row vector into a column vector. In other words, now we define row vector with upper index t. So of course, this now should be again our column vector. So we see t, the transposition, just changes columns into rows and vice versa. However, this also means that applying the transposition two times does not change anything. Hence, you can remember for column vector A, we have the formula ATT is equal to A again. So not complicated at all, but something you definitely should remember now. Okay, then in the next step, let's write down the definition for matrices. So we know a matrix is just a table of numbers with rows and columns and now the transposition should change the roles of the columns and the rows. Therefore here let's fix a matrix A with m rows and n columns. So we have m times n. And then we are able to define a new matrix AT, which now should be an element of r to the power n times m. So you see, we already exchanged rows and columns. And now the common name for AT is just transpose of A. Okay, and now you should know the definition here. If we look at the column in A, so maybe the jth column, then this should be now the jth row in AT. And on the other hand, the jth row in A is now the jth column in AT. Therefore, it's not hard at all to write this down as a formula. So we have our matrix A with the entries where we see that we have n different columns and m rows. And now what happens for AT for the transpose of A is that essentially we just reflect this picture on one diagonal in A. And now what happens for AT, the transpose of A, is that we reflect this picture with respect to the diagonal in A. And as a result, we get that rows and columns are now exchanged. Hence, AT now has to look like this. So we see, for example, that this first column here is now this row in AT. Or for another example, the second row here in A is now the second column in AT. And with this, you should see, this is exactly what we mean when we say that we reflect the picture. Okay, now in order to see how this works, let's look at examples. Of course, this whole procedure here is not so complicated, but still we should look at some concrete examples. So maybe let's start with a matrix with two rows. Hence, we now know by the definition that AT has now two columns. In other words, this flat matrix A becomes now a very tall matrix. However, of course, the numbers, the entries of the matrix are the same, just written in another form. So you can see, we can visualize this procedure as reflecting with respect to this diagonal, which means this diagonal stays the same. 
And for this reason, transposing four square matrices is very simple. The first thing we know by the definition is that then the shape of the matrix will not change. So if we look at an example of a 2 times 2 matrix, we know that the transpose of A is also a 2 times 2 matrix. Moreover, for a square matrix, this diagonal is very easy to find. Hence, in this case, AT is given as 1, 3, 2, 4. So you see, not so complicated at all. Ok, and there you see, what can happen for square matrices, and only for square matrices, is that AT is equal to A. Hence, reflecting with respect to the diagonal will not change anything. And there you see, this is indeed a 3 times 3 example of this case. Simply because here the numbers are the same as there. And you see, this explains the name we have for such matrices, we call them symmetric matrices. Simply because such a matrix is symmetric with respect to its diagonal. Well, I would say, now you know how to calculate with the transposition for matrices. And maybe let's close this video with an important rule you should remember. The question is, what happens if you transpose a matrix product? So we have A times B and then we form the transpose. And now because you know, transposing exchanges rows and columns, this should switch the order of the matrix product. In other words, this should be the matrix BT times the matrix AT. Moreover, I would say it's a very good exercise to prove this fact. For this you can recall the column and the row picture we had for the matrix product. Ok, then in the next video I will tell you what the transpose of A has to do with the inner product we know in Rn. And in fact, there we will talk more about symmetric matrices. Therefore, I really hope that I see you there and have a nice day. Bye!